years already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's already 20 years, mm -hmm. 20 years of marriage. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, that makes it like 23 years of knowing you, right? Yeah, about. We met in 1999. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. Because I was serving and that's, in Lagos. That means it's 24 years. Yeah, yeah about 24 years. Yeah. yeah. 24 years, yeah. 24 years and uh, 20 years of marriage. Mm -hmm. So almost like a quarter of a century has gone, you know, just like that. Just like that. Yeah, the only thing is I still just love you the way. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but thinking back, you know, there was a day I was, you know, just um, poking fun at my parents, you know, and um, this was just a few years ago. and. It occurred to me that I'd never asked them the question how they met. And so I just want to dial it forward to you and I and just talk a little bit about how we met. You know, what's your impression about how we first met? Because I, you know, I have my version. Yeah. So what's your impression about how we first met? Well, I guess the first time of meeting you, if I can remember, was, um, I think it was after a church service or something in Daystar. I need to introduce you Are to you me. asking me or you're telling me? No, no, I'm just, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah, I was at a service in Daystar mm -hmm. that Nii introduced you to me early in 1999, I, I believe. And Nii was, you know, uh, that's Nii Adesoya. Oh, come on. Uh, God he was my first friend in Daystar. Christian yeah, he was your fir first friend. And he said, oh, God, man, come on, meet my, my new friend. friend. I met, yeah. You know, and I was looking, mm -hmm. ah, who's this babe? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. she's pretty. Mm -hmm. You know, very, you know, very, <laughs> I don't even know. Which I don't one to know, use. unless you say it, I don't know. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. also very slim though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, and all that. I was just looking, but this, ah, this girl, where is she from? She slightly look like a northerner or Ethiopian or, you know, all that. So that's, uh, <laughs> I, I was just wondering, but she's pretty, she's very sleek. Like the way she walks, you know, and all that. But at the time, I was dating somebody, so I quickly carry my face and say, let me just greet and go before I, I get into trouble because you cannot be uh, admiring scoping. and scoping somebody <laughs> that <laughs> where you're already in a relationship. Yeah. So that was it. Like, uh -huh. We just greeted. Yeah. Oh, what's your name? My name is Bola. Bola Aniwa. Oh, Bola Aniwa. Nice name and all. My name is Godman and all. Mm -hmm. And you know, we just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. It's interesting you mentioned, um, well, Pastor Nee. He keeps telling me I'm not a pastor anymore, but Pastor Nee. It's interesting you mentioned him because my first memory of us actually meeting was when Hepzibah introduced us. Okay. I don't know if you remember that. So many people introduced us. Yeah. Yeah. They must, have, they must be feeling something that we were not feeling that time. Just chill <laughs> Chill <first. laughs> So I think it was after, it was something, we was in church and um, she literally called me and says, Bola, come, come and meet your pastor. And she was like, oh, this is Pastor Godman. This is Bola, she's a member of the choir, you know? And I think almost, it was either at that introduction or maybe the subsequent time we met where she mentioned that you were in a relationship and your girlfriend's name was so-and-so, you know? And, um, but I had noticed you before that actually. That, that was the first time we met to my recollection. I'd noticed you before that. So you were scoping me I was before scoping that. you. I was oh, scoping okay. you. Okay. That, that feels good. That <laughs> feels <ashamed>. good. <laughs> it was at a membership class. And I remember I was sitting down in my class. And the way we used to run it back then was we'd all um, kind of cluster in the big hall, the different classes. And I was supposed to be focusing on my teacher. And I noticed this guy, this bold legged guy, just walking past, you know, just walking quickly, briskly. Pow, pow, pow. And I noticed the leg. Pew, pew, pew. Oh <laughs> that was you. And I thought, who is this guy? And it's interesting. And the reason why, you know, the reason why I, I go back to that um, incident every time is because I still remember that, you know, you walked past like in this breeze and it just felt like God said to my heart, and that's a good man. I didn't know where it was coming from. I didn't even know why. I was hearing that, but you know, through the years, the truth is that there are many times where I really wanted to throw you rather than 
hug you. <laughs> you know, there have been times where we have, you know, butted heads about, you know, so many things. And even when I'm in the middle of it and really angry about something, it feels like God always takes me back to that moment where he said, look, and that's a good man. And that kind of helps me just kind of um, reset, you know? So it's interesting that as it was in the beginning, <laughs> you know, it just keeps coming back to me again and again. So first impressions, yes, there was a first introduction, but I always feel like that was God introducing me to me, literally, and just saying, that's a good man. Yeah. So God sees, you know, the hand from the beginning, because at the time that God was introducing me to you as a good man, I was dating somebody else. Yeah, you were. Yeah, but God introduced me to you, not as your husband, but a good man, yeah. that you should note yeah. that this good man will soon be available. And, and and when it comes, but 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 how come mm -hmm. with God telling you that that's a good man? Mm -hmm. When my relationship went south, mm -hmm. and uh, you know mm -hmm. I started feeling somehow mm -hmm. about you, mm -hmm. how come you now was playing hard to get? God because already signaled babe, you. you. See, don't 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 do selective memory here. Remember, fine, we were introduced and all of that, but you recall that after you um that relationship broke up the very next meeting we had remember we went together to eat somewhere and it literally was as though you were warning me don't get any designs don't get any ideas literally you were telling me hands off back off don't even imagine that i like you don't even think that i like you and i didn't say it like that yeah but that was my paraphrase and i'm, an, yeah. I'm allowed to have my what i what i said <laughs> was that so uh we went to eat mm -hmm. i just uh, I mean, my girlfriend then just broke up with me yeah. and uh, I informed you about it. Mm -hmm. And I just said, look, um, I'm still trying to recover from Don't this. try and make it, don't like, try and wash it and make it look like, you said, you said, back off, babe, back off. Don't even imagine, don't even try yourself. That's what you say. I was <laughs> so in my mind, I was like, hey, well, now look at your life. I mean, and I mean, and just just to be very vulnerable here, yeah. I did go home that day and ask myself, was there anything in my demeanor that maybe looked like um, I was, that you know, that was suggestive or was inappropriate? Because I told myself then when um, we were introduced and I heard you were in a relationship that clearly God did not mean relationship things. Maybe God was just saying, look, this is a good friendship to have. And I was new in Lagos. I'd never sort of lived or grown up in Lagos. I was anxious to have good friends. So I had reframed the entire thing in my mind. So, okay, this is a friend. This is a friend that God is trying to connect you with, someone who you can do this Christian journey in Lagos with, you know, and, and then I had finally settled it in my mind that, okay, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Look, find your, find your relationship something somewhere else. <laughs> you know, as it were. And here you are coming at me with, oh, I like you. I think I like you. Ah, okay, so, so just, okay. just, just, the block just to create, quickly. just to create context was, I was, uh, when we went to eat after my relationship broke, mm -hmm. as a responsible pastor, I wanted a situation where um, I wasn't sending wrong signals now that I'm now available and we were friends. I just wanted you to know that relationship broke, but please don't get any ideas. I'm not ready for another relationship. And to be honest, I appreciate that, that honesty. Yeah. But you it's, took it a, a it different way. Just... Like I see if um, I was feeling too highly of myself. So like six months down the line, I came and I decided to be vulnerable again. They say, look, babe, I'm getting some feelings for you and all. And they're like, what's that? You know, that rather, blocking. I thought you said. And then, it was like blocking. That's how she blocked me. Rich. She blocked me for more than one year, yes. like 18 months. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If not for God that I just said, look, this is what I feel God has put in my heart. I will just stay there, you know. Uh, well, thank God you stayed there, really. Yeah. Because, you can because imagine. To, I mean, when I think back now to what my frame of mind was at that time, honestly, in that moment, it was like, oh, never. It's not even going to happen. Clearly not. As in, in that moment, I was like, no. <laughs> way and i guess it gave me time to reflect again and remind myself that ah, you said you didn't even want to marry a pastor boy anyway so 
what's the big deal? Kenny, big deal. <laughs> you know, Kenny, big deal. So, so, and so, just... so, on that note, though, on that yes. note, all this thing about, you said you don't want to marry a pastor. Yeah. Now you've been married to a pastor for 20 years. Ah, there are, oh there, are, there are a lot of young ladies out there. Oh, my goodness. You don't say, oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, 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 your life uh -huh. has been used of God <laughs> in a very fantastic it's the way. Use of God. Yeah. <laughs> They have been <laughs> having a blessing to, to, to a generation. Wait, just so, wait, 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 so wait, wait, wait. So there wait, are other wait, young wait. ladies out there mm -hmm. who also, maybe if you dial back mm -hmm. like 22, 23 years ago, mm -hmm. they were where you were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, where they, they're busy telling themselves, you know, in, in their mid to late 20s now that mm -hmm. they don't want to marry a pastor. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to marry a pastor mm -hmm. then, but eventually you married a pastor. Yeah, Shouldn't you be encouraging them now no, that if God wants them to marry wait, a pastor, let's just take already... a step back for that, from that yeah. conversation. Um, the only way that, at least I personally, was able to step over all of that was when you reminded me that, okay, um, look at this as Bola, loving, marrying Godman. Don't see it as you know, Bola loving a pastor. Don't make the fact that I'm a pastor bigger than all of this. If you can love me, me, God, man, uh -huh, do that. And then God will help us out with the rest. So because we were able to, you know, take away some of these barriers and just focus it, drill it down to mm. what does this mean for us, you know, um, then we were able to cross that line. And even when we began to do everything else that we began to do in ministry you know um i appreciate the fact that you were patient with me i didn't have to jump in at the deep end in some regards you know um you kind of allowed me to find my feet and not make the fact that i was married to a pastor bigger yeah, than the fact that i'm married to god man so yeah. it simply came down to Bola and Godman, and then everything else we were able to layer that on top of it. That's that's good. As in, um, in fact, you're giving me perspective now, so that even when I need to maybe counsel or talk to younger people who are trying to make that kind of decision, I'd even forgotten that I had that kind of conversation with you. It was just the wisdom of God that worked then. I, I didn't plan it to be able to say, look, just love me for me, not as a pastor. And I think that's what I'll say to anyone who's who's in that, you know, uh, decision bracket. If you love what you have, forget about whether the person is a pastor or not. And for uh, people like me who have a call into ministry, looking for a good woman to marry, uh, uh, not everybody has always felt like I'm going to marry a pastor and be a pastor. So when they get in, the give them is, the soft landing. It right? had never really crossed my mind. Yeah. I mean, the truth is, um, I was on campus one day and my pastor came up to me and was like, Bola, you're going to marry a pastor. I hope you know that. And immediately I went into Olorumaje mood. Do you know what Olorumaje means? What? God forbid. <laughs> never, <laughs> never, ever, ever. Because I already had an idea of who I thought I was going to be. I saw myself Bola in the corporate space, going all the way to the boardroom just always working in those circles. And I just didn't see how it was going to work or mm. tie in to marrying someone who was in the clergy. Well, but at least but you still, you yes, still, you still for, work that corporate yes, ladder. I, I did that largely. for a while. Yeah, and I was just, you know, encouraging you and supporting you in your corporate ladder until the time that God the spoke to you. Changed. The seasons yeah. changed and you felt convinced to get into ministry. You know, today many people say things like, most every pastor's wife, be a pastor be a too. pastor too absolutely not. absolutely not absolutely. and the, the, those of us who have our pastors i mean our wives as pastors is because they are called to be pastors and they receive the calling on their own we do not and enforce the, the pressure, calling on them the yeah. pressure even makes it difficult for people to make really important decisions like this but mm -hmm. then i mean it, it's 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 interesting you know that we can reflect back on moments from 20 years ago um if you had to talk about maybe one thing, one thing through the years. Okay, you can stretch it to maybe three. Three things through the years that you would say um, you really like mm. about me. I mean, what's not to like? Okay. But <laughs> three <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, I really feel you know. Yeah, I feel. <laughs> three things. Three things that <laughs> you like. Tell me. Three things that I like yeah. about you. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. 
Well, I, I like the fact that, um, I mean, you're beautiful. Mm. Yeah, both inside and outside. Yeah, and you have a good heart. Yeah. A good heart as in a good heart. Your heart can be trusted, you know. Um, and the way I see it, the heart of a person can be stable and some people have hearts that facilitate and some people have hearts that are not good at all. You understand? Yeah, but your your heart is stable. It can be trusted. Um, I can also trust your sense of judgment on matters. You are not given to unhealthy biases and prejudices. Yeah, so that that that's a good thing. Like you have a sounding board that is healthy and unbiased, with with you know. Not, I mean, uh, w w without negative prejudices that can you know, destroy your decision making. You, know, you understand, and, and and you're spiritual. Yeah, you're spiritual. God speaks to you. Yes. I like that. <laughs> I didn't pay him to say that, by the way. <laughs> I didn't pay him to say that. Yeah, oh, you, 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 you have you Thank you <laughs> you know you have a, a real relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You see, when we tell the story of our lives together in the last even like 24 years of knowing each other and 22 years of marriage, uh, your milestones are always that you remember that God you know, spoke to you about this and about that. Even when we talk about children, this is what God said. Me, I struggle to remember <laughs> things that God, God speaks to me too, by the way. Yeah, and I think I taught you how to hear God too. So. <laughs> We'll give him that. Let's, let's allow that one. But we'll it's not that, that. I, I'm, that not, I, I, I'm not as meticulous, <laughs> you know, in, in remembering that, oh, at this critical point, God said this, God said that. You know, when it comes to ministry and church, I remember. But in other areas, I, I don't remember as much. But you do. And, um, yeah, you, you have a work with God. And maybe I should lay out this one. That's the last thing I like about you. I believe that um, uh, marrying you has brought some good blessings into my life, even financially. Uh, because, not just because of your level of financial prudence, you, you, you love good things, but you're not extravagant. You, you don't put any pressure, you know, on me financially. Um, you, uh, you, you're, you're content, you know. Uh, which is a good thing, but much more than that is that you are a giver. When we were dating, you told me that you are you don't do ten percent tight, you do twenty percent, and that challenged me. And one of the reasons why I said I must marry this girl because that blessing of twenty percent, I'm going to. I'm going you to married share. me for my blessing. <laughs> Confession. <laughs> you married no, 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 me no, 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 for no, my no, blessing. No, 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 not just that. Well, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. When mm. you know God, mm -hmm. and you know that God keeps covenant mm -hmm. and you see somebody who is walking in the covenant mm -hmm. you know then you know that if you join with that person mm -hmm. you enjoy the blessing of the covenant i have covenant that i've caught with god mm -hmm. that i've rubbed off on you as mm -hmm. well but i know that you I've... just had to slide that in you mm -hmm. can't just let it just be flowing like okay. that okay. you just have to enter <laughs> okay <laughs> but the truth is the truth now <laughs> We enjoy some of your covenant. We enjoy some of mine. You know, don't 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 take this glory to yourself. It's you know. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Interestingly, if I had to think back and ask myself, when did it really kind of? I know I've made a commitment to you. I mean, I probably said I do. You know, at one moment or the other. But I think the moment where it really kind of gripped me like a conviction that look, I'm going to marry this guy and honestly I'm going to dig my heels in and I'm going to make this the very best decision of my life you know um, from that point on after of course knowing Jesus was this day we were just having a conversation and I don't even know what you were doing really honestly I, I struggle to remember exactly where we were but I remember you just went very sober you were very sober and I was like, what's wrong? What's up? And you're like, I don't know why, but God has been very good to me and to my family. <laughs> and you know, it was a very simple statement. And I just stood there looking at you and just thinking to myself that I'm really going to marry this guy. And, I, and I'm really happy that I'm going to marry this guy. It takes nothing for granted. 
can appreciate the God of his journey. He, 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 it was okay for you in that moment to just be very vulnerable. You weren't trying to be cute. You weren't trying to look all spiritual. It just felt like it just hit you out of the blues. Like you didn't work for where you are. Even if you worked, you're way ahead of where you ought to be just by works. And in that moment, you weren't ashamed about blurting it out that you could give God glory. And it just, I guess the humility of that moment, the realness of that moment, and the, you know, just the rawness of that moment, just kind of, it really captured my heart. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, you carry I go market and not just the physical eyes, but you know, with my heart eyes and, and yeah, I just wanted to say that. I like the fact that you love family as well. I love, I, I think, I think that also drew me to you. The fact that you really do have a heart for family, um, because I really do think that family is critical. I think family is what it's all about. Every crown, every glory, every victory, every loss, everything, I think it all boils down to family and building vital families, whether the families that, you know, um, you know, are, um, you know, that God puts you in or the families that you yourself create for yourselves. I think it all comes back to family. And I really did appreciate and do still appreciate the fact that family is important to you. I recall that the members of your fellowship then, your fellowship members then, I remember a few of them heard then that there was this girl you were scoping in Lagos and who was just not, um, you know, was just not um, giving you the green light. And I could feel their, what's the word? They were irate. Ah, ah, our own Pastor G. How can any girl not want to be with our Pastor G? I could. Okay, I so could, you're talking <laughs> about the people who were in, who were in yeah, my fellowship who were in your university. Fellowship back in university. Okay, yeah, these I are could my feel people, it the way these guys were mom. so protective <laughs> of you, and they were so like, they were they were offended. How could anyone not want to be with our Pastor G? Is something wrong with her? You know, it, it was a little off-putting. But at the same time, it made me think a little bit that, ah, this guy has this quality of relationships around him. And I think it also made me think a little bit about, okay, okay, maybe I just need to think about this a little bit more and, um, and not be so, you know, <laughs> not be so petty, mm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so that was good. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so we're 20 years married in, in December. 2023. Woohoo! Ah, you're not celebrating. It's only been <laughs> uh, 20 years married. Okay. So if you had to say, okay, this one thing, one thing, this one thing has like just kind of been the biggest thing you've learned in these 20 years married, plus another maybe three or four years knowing each other. What would you say is the one thing that you've taken away from this relationship that has made this a solid relationship? Well. Um, um, you know, apart from just learning to work with God uh, and all that, one thing that I've still seen that is m one of my greatest discovery in our own marital journey has been the need to build friendship. Yeah. We didn't go to high school or university together or anything like that. You were, met yeah, as adults. Yeah, yeah, we met as adults. Mm -hmm. We were already out of college, coming to Lagos for youth service. Uh, when we met, yeah, I went to school here yeah, in the south, university in the south. You went to university in the north, north Ibi, of Zara, Nigeria, yeah. you know, north of Nigeria. So um, we 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 knew each other for a few years, like three to four years, three years plus, and then before we were talking about getting married. Uh, some people feel that's a long time, but what do you say to people who have known each other from primary Childhood. school and stuff like that? They feel like they've built friendship to a point. One of my greatest discoveries in the last 20 years is that um, whether you have built friendship for many years before you decide to marry, or you married like us, just meeting each other as adults in the, in, for a couple of years and you marry, the responsibility of building friendship in the marriage, uh, 
is still a necessity. You will never yeah, be exoner yes. exonerated from that. Some people stop the friendship because they've known everything about each other, but it, they, what they don't know is that <clears throat> it's something that can hinder the progress of the marriage. Uh, we came to a point where we realized that we weren't really friends, we were just lovers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our love came by conviction and we had to turn it to practical yeah. and um, engaging love. Yeah. Not just, I have the love of Christ in my heart for this person. I, ha I heard the word from God that this is my wife or God told me he's a good man. Mm -hmm. and so because of that, I decided. I'm staying here, uh -huh. but my yeah. mind is out there. I'm yeah. here physically, but everything else is out there. Yeah. I think a lot of couples get to that place as well. And we've momentarily been in that space in the course of these 20 years. Yeah. And we had to fight our way back yeah. into friendship. We had to really fight for it. We had to dig our heels in and say, you know what? It's worth fighting for. It's yeah. worth it's worth pushing, you know, out of this stalemate you know, into a place where things begin to flourish again. I yeah, agree yeah because there are many people who marry for 60, even 70 years, never had a, a breakup or anything or divorce, and they're not Christians. And, but they understand certain principles that make their, uh, their union what they were, and they stay in it. And one of those things is the confidence that to be able to say, this person is my friend, we're like this. You know, we're face to face, vulnerable with each other, transparent, you know, open, you know, honest and transparent with each other. That's what we've had uh, most of this last 20 years, mm -hmm. especially when we realize that we're not friends and we have to start building friends. Mm -hmm. And we say friends are open with each other, friends are vulnerable with each other, uh, friends are honest with each other, real friends, I mean, and friends share things in common and they look forward to doing things together. I think that last yeah. point, I think for me was big because there was a moment we got to where we realized that we really weren't laughing together. I, I think we had to, I think, I think if I had to pick any one thing that was critical for us or just digging our way out of a stalemate was insisting that we're gonna laugh together. You know what, and I remember what you said at that moment, that when you get a joke, when you see a meme, when you see, you know, something funny on, online, Who's the first person you want to share it with? Does it even cross your mind to share it with your significant other? And that got to me because I think we were in a moment in our marriage right then where it was like, please, I don't want to share a smile with you, please, you know. Just yeah, because I, re I remember at the point, yeah. I mean, those were maybe it wasn't probably even the days of WhatsApp, I can't remember, where I sent you uh, a joke once and your response was, that was gross. And you didn't, <laughs> You didn't, you know. I didn't find it funny. I didn't find it funny. And yeah. I started feeling like, ah, this girl is, she, 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 it doesn't look like she's my type, oh, because mm -hmm. things are funny to me and not funny to her. Mm -hmm. So my boys, I'll send it to them, mm -hmm. we'll crack ourselves up. Mm -hmm. They will call me, we'll joke for the next one hour, mm -hmm. dissecting the joke and all that. But this one, you send but the joke this to her. It's it does, not getting yeah. it at all. You know, so, so but it makes matching it easy. up. Really, it makes it easy for you to literally cut this person off and not even realize that that's what's happening. What's happening is you're freezing each other out of something that is important to you. It may seem like just a joke, but it's important to you. But because of a response you got, because of the way they responded, reacted, you didn't get the answer you wanted. You begin to build up walls. And before you know it, the walls just keep going higher and higher and higher until you're asking yourself, when did I marry this stranger? I'm grateful that we didn't leave it there. Yeah, I'm grateful we were able to make that yeah. progress from there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, um, we're not totally there, but you're my friend now. Yeah, <laughs> my friend. Even though you still have Skoin Skoin sometimes. So how do we interpret Skoin Skoin for our non-Nigerian people? Um, it means that some of the wires come loose sometimes. <laughs> some of the nuts and bolts come loose sometimes. But you're my friend. You are my friend. That's and what I makes for a good friend. A good friend must have, you know. Loose nuts and bolts. Yes, once in no. a while. No. That's what makes you appreciate that. No. Oh, oh, he has come again or she has no. come again. No, please. <laughs> please, no. <laughs> there's no, there's nobody that's perfect. And your, your friend, that's your true. best friend has to be able to show their imperfection. Mm -hmm. And so when the, what you call coin, coin, or coin, coin, 
when it happens, it's there is show. no concretizing. It's, it's simply, it's yeah. simply bad. When <laughs> when the wires touch, that's where you know my friend has come in this element or in our element, and then you take your friend like that, and then everything turns to a joke eventually. At some yeah. point, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. if I had to pick one thing, maybe that was really like a mainstay for me, something that you know kind of helped build some stability, was the fact of just learning to give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, because sometimes the way our minds work is we build narratives for ourselves when we see behavior that we don't like. So you say something or you do something and I immediately begin to personalize and internalize it. Oh, it's because, you know, he is being mean to me. It's because he's trying to say this or that to me. And I've already built this whole persona of you in my mind Mm. and maybe so far away from the truth. And learning how to give you the benefit of the doubt and insist when I get on that, when I get into that mind space where I'm already beginning to think that, you know what, ah, okay, if that's the way it is, me too, I will show you my own behavior. It's to remind myself that, no, 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 God man loves me. God man, if he hurt me, he did not set out to hurt me. It was just a byproduct of something else that may have been going on, but I engage. So just that capacity to give you the benefit of the doubt and believe the best of you, regardless of what I see physically, or what I'm tempted to interpret from what I see physically, I think for me has been big. It probably didn't come early enough in our yes, marriage. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. It took a while. That thank God for growth. <laughs> thank God for growth because I suffered before we got to that point. Because this person is like the what they call edge hog, you know, <laughs> that when you prick the person, That's it just it. Yeah, just goes back in and releases spikes. You know, she won't talk, but if you come close, tongue, you know, something will spike you if you come too close. So uh, uh, before you started <laughs> to learn to engage yeah. and for us to talk, yeah. uh, I did something that maybe it wasn't quite nice or that you didn't like, but you just keep quiet mm-hmm. and you become a brick wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything I say, you don't have anything over the bar. Over the bar. Uh, do you have anything to say? I don't have anything to say. Uh, and if you try to uh, use be like too, uh, use force, you know, uh-huh. push you aside, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But thank God, growth has happened. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> At least now, you know, that thing that, you know, <laughs> let me engage because, oh, my spouse yeah. didn't mean any harm. Yeah. You know, um, I can trust that that may not have come out well, but it's not coming from a bad place. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. an error from the head, not from the heart. Yeah. Uh, and that has made the world that of was, That has made the world Removing, of you know, oh, the filters. And, and I think what to, shocked me the most about making this discovery for myself was, I thought it would help me, you know, to understand you better. As in when I was, when I was, you know, I I am um, putting on my big girl pants and saying, okay, Bola, this is how we're going to engage now. This is how we're going to do this thing going forward. I thought it was simply going to help me and, you know, um, know you better, understand you better and live with you better. But what I realized that when I began to give you the benefit of the doubt, the the byproduct of that is I began to be a little bit more forgiving about myself because I can be a bit of a perfectionist. Mm. I can be a little bit, you know. But the more I began to give you grace and the more I began to believe the best about you, it made it easier for me to believe the best about myself and to be very honest about the fact that, okay, well, you goofed there, but it's not the end of the world. Um, um, if God man can do this yeah. with you and can overlook this with you, what's your stress? Move on from this. And suddenly it made me see that some of the places where I was so staunch and rigid, it wasn't necessarily me pushing you away. Sometimes it was me responding to the imperfections I was seeing in myself. And that for me was a big revelation. I didn't realize that I had become such a stumbling block in our dynamic. And I'm really grateful that um, that we've grown. (laughs) That where we are is not where we used to be. We're not yet where we want to go. But thank God we're not where we used to be. Thank God, because yeah. where we used to be was not a good place. It was to be. tough. <laughs> <laughs> it was tough, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm happy I married you. 
Same I'm here. so grateful to God that it was you and that I said yes and that I didn't allow my stubbornness or, you know, my fear to stand in the way that I said yes and that we have continued to engage and to grow and to believe the best about each other through the years. I mean, look where we are now. Who would have believed it? <laughs> I'm happy I married you too. I, yeah. I'm happy that I, I, you know, just st stuck my head in that space, even when you were, you know, seemingly fascinating and not, maybe not sure whether you should go ahead. Mm -hmm. And um, even through the, the issues that we've had, just trying to adjust to each other, uh, getting to know each other better and, you know, getting used to each other's you know, witnesses and all. It's been it's been a great ride. Uh, the most important thing in these 20 years is that we have grown. Yeah, and uh, growth is one thing that is literally irreversible. If you have grown, you have grown. We have grown, and uh, much more is that I've grown to love God better and to love you better, uh, which is. Uh, you know, some people are in a relationship where they can't say they are growing in love with their spouse and God. Yeah. Uh, some people have lost their love for God just because of who they, marry. who they marry. And some people have chosen to just continue to love God, but are not growing in love with the person they married. And it may not end well eventually. But for, for us and for you, I've grown in loving Jesus and I've grown in loving you. And uh, I just want to do this. You know, continue to do this. Eh? Happy anniversary, baby. Happy anniversary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>